night, guys. Well, it is an exciting Saturday night here in Doomsday Trailer on this good lord. What do you call this yuck weekend we're having? Hopefully, the last weekend of winter time on this rainy, gloomy Saturday night where uh, I will soon uh, be popping my clonopin washing them down with tequila Saturday night is my my Klonopin night uh, <laughs> to get me through another Saturday night but before I head into Klonopin Never Never Land and cannot do a uh, rant I just want to warn you guys so right now this is going to be another rant about quote space aliens. So if you have no interest whatsoever in space aliens, then uh, shut this fucking video off right now. Go over to Collapse Chronicles maybe, although I don't think that I dude was talking about anything today either. But anyway, in a rant I had a couple of nights ago, I was uh, I mentioned that, you know, I've, I've never understood, you know, what, what, what I'm talking about when I loosely, somewhat facetiously use this term about how I was abducted by space aliens for 22 years of my life. I, you know, I, I've often wondered how, you know, people hearing me say this, do they think I am lying, or do they think I'm batshit crazy? Because nobody, well, there's a few people who might actually believe that this dude is reporting an experience that he experienced not once, not twice, I don't know how many dozens of times, spanning 22 years. So, either I am a liar I am a fucking mentally ill, paranoid, schizophrenic whack job, or I am reporting to the best of my ability with the vocabulary I have in the English language to describe this phenomenon. And I'm not the only person who has been dead up against this. This is millions of people, I think. Uh, uh, over the planet, over the decades, if not centuries, have experienced something similar to this. And uh, so I, I got one response I noticed. So I appreciate George Nelson being the one person to respond. So, but I still don't know, but after reading i uh, reading George's comment whether he thinks uh, I am a lying sack of shit just making up some crazy ham bone story to see how, how much I can yank your chain with my performance art uh, but trying to uh, telling this crazy story I, I don't know if he thinks that I still don't know or if he just thinks I'm a that George Nelson thinks that obviously this dude uh, it, it is a paranoid, schizophrenic, batshit crazy fucker, uh, you, you know, who should be uh, tube-fed clonopin and locked up in a rubber room for the rest of his life. Because here is this comment. Sam, I would believe you if you would please be so kind as to show us some hard evidence of your experience. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. You have offered zero evidence. Also, Sam Bone, blah, blah, blah words. And by, by his also, uh, what, what he was, you know, this was doing a rant where, where I was complaining that that, uh, that, that cult leader, Rael, uh, making absolutely preposterous claims uh, was showing no evidence. And so addressing that part, 
my comment to George was, I do not recall ever claiming I have ever seen a UFO, much taken a ride in one, and being appointed ambassador to Earth by its occupant. So, already, and I don't blame George because uh, th th he's speaking for most people. They see no difference between what I have been talking about for years and, and what this lying sack of shit cult leader. He is claiming that a physical, three-dimensional UFO, uh, either, I'm unclear whether this happened one time in his life or he's claiming it still happens regularly. He is claiming that a, a three-dimensional, I guess some sort of metal UFO craft landed and these three-dimensional physical beings invited him in. He wasn't abducted. This guy was not an abductee. He was an invitee. So he is claiming that he has been inside a physical three-dimensional craft assumedly from outer space, uh, although I never, I never understood where, or what planet or whatever they came from, and that he had interactions <coughs> with physical beings, physical humanoid beings, that appointed him to be their ambassador to planet Earth. And George Nelson, like 99% of people, uh, do not understand the difference between that and what I have been describing uh, uh, for, for how many years. That happened to me uh, so many times over 22 years. And uh, so right off, we have a problem. I have never claimed one time in my entire life that I've even seen a fucking UFO. Like everybody else, I've seen some weird shit in the sky. I have never seen a fucking three-dimensional, physical, assumedly metallic craft being driven by physical, three-dimensional space aliens. Never made that claim, George. Never have, never will, because if I did, I would be like Rael making up a big fucking lie. Rael has never, as far as I know, provided even a little smudge, grainy photo. He's never provided one piece of physical reality evidence off what he claims is a three-dimensional physically real craft. He, he, he's never brought so much as a fucking, I don't know, a matchbook. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Nothing uh, uh, other than his bullshit. Alright, but more importantly, uh, my answer to George uh, about offering evidence about uh, you know, what I call interdimensional beings, which these things are, they are not coming from outer space. They are interdimensional beings, okay, that I have been communicating with, uh, to, to put it mildly. So, addressing that in, it's kind of hard to provide hard evidence of something happening inside a person's pineal gland when they are asleep in the middle of the night. And then I talk about an experience I, I had in Austin, Texas, which I'll mention a, a little bit later. Uh, if you want hard evidence, I highly suggest you read the book DMT, the Spirit Molecule by Dr. Rick Strassman, which was my epiphany, though even it cannot explain the end of my own 22 years of torture. 
right now, uh, I need to go check the air fryer. I think I'm burning my my dinner here. Well, I guess it's all right. I love my air fryer. Love the air fryer. I wonder if uh, that's space alien technology. So for the few of you here on the planet who, who one more time uh, want, want to listen to this, and I'm not going to try, well I am going to attempt to distill 22 years of a, whatever words you want to use for it, psychic experience, paranormal experience, whatever, uh, 22 years in, 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 into a few minutes. Uh, good, good luck on, on me trying to do that. Uh, what I experienced was experienced inside my head while I was asleep at night. Any interactions I have ever had with UFOs and space aliens took place while I was asleep in bed in the middle of the night or actually more commonly right at the end of the night and you know just before waking up in that what they call the hypnagogic state. So. I want, uh, I want everybody to understand I have never been inside, I have never seen a physical UFO, I have never been inside a UFO, I have never met, uh, you know, in front of me, you know, like this little space alien, a, a, a space alien that uh, I can reach out and touch. I, I have I I, there, I would like George or anybody else to explain exactly how you are supposed to provide hard evidence to an experience happening inside your head. I don't know how I'm going to bring the camera inside my head while I'm asleep at night and, and photograph these fucking UFOs and these space aliens. Don't know how I'm going to do it, George. I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. Interdimensional beings are not circus monkeys that, uh, that you can train to come out and, and do tricks uh, for closed-minded people uh, who, who are so threatened. And, you know, any of this paranormal shit, space aliens, uh, ghosts, whatever, I, what I do not understand is, is, is why these rationalists are, are, are so threatened by, by this stuff. Uh, I, 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 who gives a fuck? Uh, you, you know, who, who fucking gives a fuck about it? Uh, the, 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 the whole definition of reality, uh, good fucking God, I mean, you know, we could get into Carlos Castaneda, Terrence McKenna, uh, and on and on and on and on, but there, there are a certain group of people who will never believe in interdimensional beings and there are a group of people who do believe that there could be such a thing as that could be in are such a thing of interdimensional beings. If you're in the first camp, like I probably certainly was till this shit started in my life at age 18 and probably held on to probably tell I hell I, I, I was 30 I would have been one of you I had no room in my brain for the concept of interdimensional beings but after 22 years uh, of, uh, of dealing with these little fuckers and then as I mentioned 
in there, the, the, the final epiphany to me, uh, when, when I came around uh, after all of my years of, uh, of Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan and Terrence McKenna talking about interdimensional beings, it was Rick Strassman, Dr. Rick Strassman, and his book, DMT, The Spirit Molecule, that finally explained it to me. To my satisfaction, it explained what was going on. As, a, you know, as my mama always said, I don't know what is happening with you, but it has something to do with brain chemistry. That is exactly what it has to do with. Once again, my mother was right. It has to do with brain chemistry, and the brain chemical it has to do with is DMT, dimethyltryptamine or whatever uh, they, the full word for that stuff is. So, my mama, uh, if she had lived, uh, she died before the publication of DMT, the spirit molecule. I'm guessing, I, I'm sorry I never got to have this debate with my mother. She would have said, ha ha, I am right. You have, you're, you're, she would have believed probably that I was having a, an imbalance in my DMT that is produced by your, everyone in, in our pineal gland, we produce this stuff. Uh, she would probably have agreed with Dr. Strassman. Uh, what was triggering these episodes was a, a, an, an out of whack pineal gland that was secreting too much DMT and, and, and that was the explanation and she would have been fine and, and she would have felt fully satisfied with that explanation and, uh, and and a lot of people would probably maybe even George Nelson would go that far maybe even Andy the gardener although I doubt Andy the gardener would even go that far uh, but he might. But what Rick Strassman, after doing this research, you understand Rick Strassman has never been abducted by space aliens, okay, or any of this stuff. He was just doing these clinical trials, you know, giving people DMT and, and you know, interviewing them after their DMT trips. And over and over and over and over again, they were describing in, in various forms uh, having, you know, exactly like Terrence McKenna, Don Juan Matus, uh, explaining it to Carlos Castaneda. Uh, they were uh, having interactions with all sorts of various uh, entities, uh, whatever you want to call these, <coughs> interdimensional beings, spiritual entities, whatever that they, they uh, whether what what did what did Terrence call them machine uh, self-replicating machine elves. Uh, in, in my case, space aliens, as some people, the incubus and the succubus, uh, the, the list goes way back through history where people having somewhat similar uh, episodes, but the, the common theme is when, you're, when you have excess DMT, wherever it comes from, uh, in the clinical trials, obviously, uh, he was giving them DM. They were, were they smoking it or inject? I can't remember what form they were taking it uh, in, in in his clinical trials. That that after hearing it enough, that uh, Rick Strassman, this classically trained medical doctor, uh, he, he, you know, with a, he was an MD, uh, had no choice but to conclude 
what these people were describing were were actual interactions on an interdimensional interdimensional level with quote real beings every bit as much as this little dog is a real uh, being and and, and, and and he I mean it really wrecked his entire worldview and it sure as shit it did it did not help his career as a uh, medical doctor uh, in the community when he came out with his findings and his conclusion was these things whatever the fuck they are they are quote real entities and the way they travel is on DMT. The DMT, the, the spirit molecule, it is the way these beings cross the in from the spiritual paranormal realm into uh, our brains. And, and it's completely preposterous but compared to, to, to all of this horse shit, uh, you know, that Rael is talking about, uh, you, you know, talking about actual physical craft uh, flying in uh, from other solar systems or other galaxies. Uh, you know, I actually uh, finally got to the point where I, 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 I rule out that shit. So this interdimensional beings is the only explanation. But I understand that there is no amount of research, whatever. Uh, if, if George Nelson or a lot of uh, even took DMT and had and met some of these guys in, in their DMT trip, they would probably still come back and saying it was a drug trip. I happen to be, to have left that camp, and, and I am in the camp of people who believe now, A, in these interdimensional beings, and B, that they are in fact riding on DMT. That is the explanation that suits me, okay? And, and I have a wild idea that it that it, it's the explanation that uh, that f for millions of these people uh, tortured by these alien abductions that happen in the middle of the night. It, it's the exact thing happening with me. These little fuckers are interdimensional beings flying in on their little interdimensional UFOs. They experience the UFO and the space alien when their pineal glands, their overactive pineal gland, for whatever reason, uh, it, it is overstimulated and puts too much DMT into their bloodstream and these little guys come in. <clears throat> now, the, the whole UFO connection, I don't know. Uh, there, there, there's obviously uh, probably as many species uh, of these little interdimensional beings as, as there are. What do we got? 10 million species of, of earthlings or if humans killed off half of them, we should have 10 million. You know what I'm saying? So there's probably 10 million uh, varieties of these uh, interdimensional beings. For whatever reason, uh, my DMT channel is tuned into the UFO, quote, space alien uh, variety. Some other people uh, might might be you know tuned into I I don't know the uh, the incubus and the succubus or there's that channel there there, there there's probably as many interdimensional uh, being channels as as third dimensional uh, Earthlings. Uh, so you you, you either uh, you either look at the fucking evidence. And obviously, it helps if you experience it yourself. 
for uh, for 22 years. Uh, so, uh, if, if I'm so, a lot of people would say anybody describing meeting these little beings is a paranoid, schizophrenic, batshit crazy, mentally ill, uh, whatever. But at least uh, when they wake up. They're somewhat, uh, you know, able to pass in normal society, uh, and, and they keep it there. Uh, you know, I mean, I was married for seven years. I was sleeping to next to a woman who who saw me being abducted by space aliens. Okay. She was there right beside me when I was dealing with these fucking space aliens. I've told this story before. Of course, she did early in, in, in the marriage. Uh, you know, my, my, my dear, sweet, late, great ex-wife, she was 4 foot 10 and weighed 88 pounds. You know, she was about the size of one of these fucking little space aliens in real life. And one time when I was having one of these episodes... Uh, she she woke me up in the middle of it. You understand, I have never hit a woman in my life. She woke me up in the middle of one of these episodes, and, and, and there I have this 4 foot 10 inch, 88 pound little being uh, shaking me, and, and, and I fucking grabbed her and threw her halfway across the fucking room. Think you know, thinking she was a fucking space alien, and and, and, uh, and she's down there on the fucking floor. Uh, and I'm saying, God damn it, don't you fucking ever wake me up in the middle of one of these episodes. And she's backing up against the closet, and she goes, Listen, dude, I will never ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and she never did. But she witnessed me being abducted by space aliens, okay? I have never claimed, never claimed uh, that I've been on a fucking UFO dealing with a third dimensional space alien. It's fucking horse shit. You know, I remember the scene in, uh, in somewhere in one of the Castaneda books. You know, when Castaneda uh, w w w was trying to to understand all this, and and, and he's uh, and he's asking Don Juan, what would other people see when uh, you know someone having one of these experiences, these wild experiences? Uh, you know, he asked Don Juan what other people uh, would see. And I'm like, well, who gives a fuck what other people? And he, he, he gets frustrated with the Castaneda. And he says, what other people would see is a man lying there asleep. You know, in Castaneda, when he would have these experiences and, and, and trying to wonder what other people saw, uh, they see a man lying there asleep. But because this shit is going on uh, inside their brains, all of this shit that uh, it, 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 you know, the Castaneda stuff, uh, the, the the DMT material from Terence McKenna. Uh, as far as I know, uh, I don't think Terence McKenna ever claimed that he walked into a physical metallic UFO met a, a, a three-dimensional space alien and got flown off to uh, the Pleiades or wherever. Uh, Terrence McKenna, he, he thinks the, the, you know, the whole alien abduction thing, I, I, I just played the, uh, the clip, total, complete fucking horseshit. Terrence McKenna is on record talking about uh, anyone claiming uh, that real fucking little gray spate whatever abducted them, took them off in a UFO, uh, did all of these weird experiments, batshit crazy. 
okay? This is the same man talking about self-replicating machine elves that he would meet regularly when putting DMT into his system. I, I don't know, George, if you can see the fucking difference, Terrence McKenna can see it, uh, Don Juan Matus uh, can see it, a uh, hambone little tail can understand the fucking difference. And then, uh, that, that's the first part, is understanding that part, which a lot of people can't get that far, and then you, you got the second part of it. Okay, if it's happening inside someone's brain and is not happening in 3D physical reality that can be reproduced, in a uh, in a lab, uh, then it did not happen. That 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 the person is batshit crazy. Uh, it's just some sort of weird dream or nightmare uh, that they had, and, and nothing more, nothing less. And, and if that uh, protects your little fucking. Uh, your, your, your little fucking fragile, uh, just, just eggshell thin uh, ego that there can't be any other things going on in this universe. Uh, if you can't see them, hear them, smell them, touch them, uh, they don't exist. Uh, if it can't be reproduced in a lab. And, uh, oh yeah, real quick, you saw that, uh, the, the other two things that, that I referenced in here, I, I'm not going to tell this story. I will put the link to how I kicked a space alien's ass and how I ended this 22-year uh, reign of terror by these little interdimensional beings. And that, that whole story, uh, how I did to it, which is basically, you, you, you know, taking the advice of someone who had been through this, and that was simply when I went to sleep to invite them in. Invite them in to my brain. And, and, and so I extended the invitation to these little fuckers, and they came and it took 10 minutes uh, to talk to these goddamn little space aliens. They were right there. I said, come on, guys. I gave them permission to come in and give me their best shot. So we fucking, uh, uh, you know, we, we got together. I invited the fuckers in, and we ended up all being friends and, and, and parting company. And I have never in my life, that was the night before I moved to Austin, Texas. So this was 24 years ago. Uh, I have never in my life except one time ever had the experience again. And that was when I moved to Austin and I think I'd probably been there maybe two years in Austin. What I did was I, uh, I joined a, uh, one of these clinical trials this is before I got my real estate license and was, was, was getting short on money. So they were paying $2,500 to test out this new sleeping pill. So what we would do is we would go into the lab every night. We would actually sleep there. They would give us the sleeping pill and, and they would hook, literally hook electrodes up to our heads. Uh, I don't know how many times, maybe three or four times maybe during the study where they would, uh, we would take the medication and we would have all of these weird electrodes measuring our brain waves. And I am inside a medical clinic in Austin, Texas with some sort of unknown brain altering sleeping pill in my bloodstream and a bunch of these weird electrodes 
uh, hooked up to my head, and in the middle of the night, I had sort of one, it wasn't a very major one, it did not involve UFOs and space aliens for once. I had finished that, and uh, it was it, it was a very weird episode. It was it was a close cousin, and, and, and I clearly knew that there was another being, quote, in the room with me. Is how, I, but it, but it, but it, you know, in my brain, in the room with me. And uh, who, who the fuck is the only time I've ever had one of these episodes uh, in, in 24 years? And who the fuck knows? Maybe it was the nurse coming into the room and checking up on me during the night. It, it could have been a fucking nurse in the room. Uh, that could have been the explanation. Uh, I'm thinking it had more to do with the electrodes hooked up to my brain than the sleeping pills, but the combination of the sleeping pills and the electrodes in my brain triggered this DMT uh, rush out of my pineal gland. And while I, thank God, I wasn't uh, tussling with space aliens and running from uh, invading UFOs, uh, it, it, it was still pretty scary, and I remembered, and so uh, there was actually somewhere, probably still exists, I, what do they call that, an EKG of my brain waves having one of these experiences, and I, of course I tried to get a copy of my brain scan for that night, and uh, the, the, the study leader, he was like, like why the hell do you want to see uh, a, a, a brain scan and I didn't want to get kicked out of the study and lose my $2,500 but uh, so I shut up but I, it just makes me sick to think uh, that, that somewhere exists a brain scan of one of these and I know you've probably heard of that helmet that weird kind of electrode helmet that that they put on and and one of the things it can produce is the feelings of entities in the room with you what uh, they they don't know why what is going on with those helmets i am uh assuming it, it is the these weird electrical imbalances are somehow overstimulating the pineal gland. I'm taking a wild guess here after reading Rick Strassman's research. But anyway, if by any chance anybody listening to this is going through the sheer hell of these uh, alien abductions while they're sleeping in the middle of the night and they want to put an end to it tonight, Tonight, you can put an end to this shit. Anybody suffering from this can put an end to it. I'm not going to get into the story. I will put the link to how I kicked a space alien's ass, and I will explain to anyone suffering from this. And, and, and when I say suffer, I mean suffer how to put an end to it in one night and it will never happen again. I know I've been there. So, uh, go to the lake, and you too can kick a space alien's ass and reclaim your life. But now that I've finished that, I'm going to go stimulate something with some clonopin and go on to Netflix and binge on this uh, new new uh, comedy series, Resident Alien, on, uh, on uh, Netflix, which is actually pretty funny. Klonopin and Netflix, my Saturday night. Bye, guys.